Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher, and I'm here with episode number 63 of my This and That series, a continuing saga of my life in the shop and on YouTube, I guess you could say. Well, notice that I'm wearing a new green t-shirt from Green Bay Manufacturing. Now, that's the company in Wisconsin that... I should say, from which I bought these little sleeves with square holes. So, now you may notice that I'm wearing a new type of uh, magnifier here. And this was a gift, brand new in the box, from one Mr. Chuck Kavanicka. I hope I got your name right, Chuck. Uh, I, even though you spelled it out phonetically for me one time, it, it's a mouthful. But uh, he's up in Dearborn, Michigan, and thank you very much for this, Chuck. And I'm going to show you a little more of it here in just a second. But Chuck is the very gracious and generous man from Dearborn that worked at Ford Motor. And he gave me, that is correct, he gave me that closing horizontal mill here two or three years ago. Thanks, Chuck, for your generosity. So this product is called Vision Aid, and you know it's a game changer for close-up work. Something like a dentist might wear, and you can fit it on your head right over your regular prescription glasses. It has a little LED light. I didn't put the batteries in yet, but it takes three AAAs, which might make it kind of heavy if you don't need the, uh, the light. But it is fitted with these magnifiers here, and there was included in the kit a total of five of these with various magnifications. This is the two times, which is probably the one that I will use the most. And this can be worn in bed. That flips up. Adjustable nose piece. These ear pieces come off if you would have a notion, and you could wear it with this elasticized strap. So this looks interesting. I'll be using this and seeing just how well it works. So thanks again Chuck. I think all of you YouTubers are familiar with Randy Richard in the shop. A great guy. I do know him personally and he's just sent me his latest product project which is a knocker. Now this is a piece of DOM tubing that's drawn over the mandrel and it is filled with, or partially filled with, lead shot, very one and a half ounces, so I can feel it shake. It's brass on one end, and nylon. He told me the kind of plastic that is, but I, for, I forgot already. Engraved with my name and the serial number, and he's going to make these available. I'll put his uh, link down in the description if you want to check that out. So a knocker or wrapper or tapper, I guess I was calling it a wrapper, but that's a singer. I think that's a singer. But these are used to adjust your work in a chuck or a vise. You still have it slightly loose and you can tap it into position to a layout line or to your dial indicator or whatever you happen to be uh, setting up. So it's real handy for that. I had been using this lead piece which weighs about two pounds and is often overpowering as you can imagine. This is much more lightweight and it carries the dead blow feature. Thank you Randy for that. I think most of you are aware that Randy Richard has a complete line of accessory tools for your machine shop including this beautiful set of scribers. Some of them are already opened here different materials, some hex, some round, and all of them are carbide. These are the scribers I use all the time. And this nice set of dovetail cutters. And now his latest project here, the knocker. And these are inscribed. More photos at the end of this video. Just a little update on making serrations and different ways of doing it, and I had several videos on that, but I never did show you this. This is a 60 degree V cutter, double sided, one inch bore, 
and this could be used on the horizontal mill for doing that operation or on the vertical mill put on an arbor and use the right angle attachment but that's you know an awful lot of work for what it is these are terribly expensive I think at least one hundred dollars and would be extremely delicate in terms of the uh, the point and once you knock those corners off there you know you, you have a ruined cutter that needs to be thrown out so I just got uh, an email from Ellie Price and I had told you that this type of cutter end mill does not work well at all because it just doesn't cut on the very end and I had told you that this is called uh, a, a drill mill and it's solid carbide but it tends to plow through well Ellie Price sent me some pictures and I'll show you those and he has apparently one of these and he thinned the point as we he was a tool and die maker so thank you for that Ellie he's given me a lot of advice and help but he had good results on this by thinning the point or I guess we could say a split point as we sometimes see on drill bits so I guess that is uh, useful this is also an expensive cutter and carbide approximately 50 bucks these are the pictures that Ellie Price sent me of milling the serrations in a crisscross pattern, I should say almost like a waffle iron, and there's the cutter that he's using. There's another good view of it. That's in aluminum, of course. Here's a close-up of it, but it doesn't look like the cutter is cutting all that cleanly. It's pushing the metal, it looks like to me, even though he split the point. The videos on my Mack truck bulldog uh, were eh, not too well received, but I think there's about 10,000 views, but I really do like this. And there's an update on this that I want to show you. Do you know who this man is? Well, of course you don't. I didn't know myself till 10 minutes ago, but it's Colonel Alfred... Masary, and he was the chief engineer at Mack Truck for many, many years. And here he is next to the cabin on the Akron dirigible. And he died shortly after that when it went down at, at sea in a storm. But this man was the driving force behind Mack Truck for many years, held well over 100 patents. But why am I telling you this? you ask. Funny you should ask. Is everybody happy? Well I'm telling you that because he is credited with being the sculptor of this bulldog and supposedly while recovering surgery in a hospital bed he carved it out of soap and then later on refined it with wood and then I'm sure it has changed many times over the year by master sculptors and artists but that I thought was a very interesting story and just think what Mack Truck would have been without him and it's unfortunate he died so young at about the age of 50 you can look that up on Wikipedia many people watched that video where I used the safety planer Wagner safety planer and several many many people asked me well can we still get those well, where are those available and uh, actually three people asked me but there it is the original this is almost 50 years old it probably is 50 years old but it is available by Stumac let me show you a clip of that video so there it is apparently his name is Stuart McDonald I wasn't familiar with him at all but he does some guitar making and make some great videos but anyway he has resurrected this product and sells it there it is and now I believe it's about 62 bucks so you can look that up on Google and matter of fact it's improved a little bit let me show you and here's the improvement and I'm not sure if he has bought the rights to manufacture this but it sure looks a lot like the other one but the cutters have two points so when you dull or wear out one point, you would simply reverse the cutters and you have a refreshed brand new point. 
I don't know if he recommends sharpening them like the Gilmore product, but I thought some of you would find this interesting. I sure did. And this really is a neat product. I use it all the time for pattern making, but always with relatively small pieces of wood. You wouldn't want to try to plane down a 12-foot plank. By the way, I forgot to tell you, not that you would care, but I did get the flu vaccine. The one they call Moderna or something like that. But I was sick for uh, one day after the first shot. And then I got sick after the second shot. And I was so bad for one day that I wished I hadn't got the shot. But now I'm glad that I did. You saw me make this pattern recently. And I, I don't know if I showed it or not. But this is my go-to, my favorite compass. I'm a metal worker. I don't usually talk about compasses. I talk about dividers. But this is my favorite and you can still get it. This is not a good one at all because it has the sheet metal clamp and I think at one time I even, yeah, I smashed a, a little dimple in there to try to get it to grip the pencil better. But this is an absolute piece of junk. Maybe better than a school child's compass that he gets at Ben Franklin for a dime, but not much. So, and this is a very high quality steric, but I never do use it. It is very clumsy and heavy, although I love it because it's a steric. It has a nice clamp for a pencil, and also there are other metal points that fit in this little socket here. But this is your go-to. They're about $3. Let me show you a picture of it at Menards. And there it is at Menards for $3.49. There are probably other stores such as the big box stores that also sell it. It is a general product. Die cast, quite sturdy. I've had it for 40 years. To change the subject, can we talk about Rumble and the failure that it has been for me, but maybe successful for others? I have two videos on there. They've been on for maybe a couple months. This one earned a dime and had, what, 146 views or 47, whatever it says. By the way, while I'm on this page, this is what my arms now look like at the age of 77. Matter of fact, that's a picture of me holding my cheeks. And, and this is my successful video on uh, Rumble. It has not appeared yet on YouTube, but I'm going to put it on sooner or later. I made it quite a while ago. But there's 345 views and it earned me a full 49 cents. After I double that, I'll be able to buy a Hershey bar. Well, I saved this for last. Maybe I should have put it on first. And by the way, there'll be a little extra credit, so stick around for that. I have to hold a lot of things off until the next episode. We're running out of time here, and I'm not able to cover everything. But uh, most appropriately, this item came in a Sterrett box. And look what it is. A beautiful old advertising piece from Sterrett, probably 50 years old at least. It is metal. It has such depth to it. And this was sent to me by Ted Farwell along with a real good story, which I'm going to tell here in a minute, but you'll see this in the background now of a lot of my videos because it's, so, it's just so pretty and it's, it's striking with the Sterrett logo, don't you think? Eat your heart out, Adam, another Sterrett lover. So many years ago, Ted was working either in Oregon or Washington, I forgot, but he was with a work crew and he had to go into a Napa store and make a purchase. I think it was a big purchase for tools that they needed for this job. And of all things, this sign was someplace behind the counter there. And Ted was so struck by it, he asked the man, he said, uh, would you care to part with that? What would you uh, have to have? You know, I'd like to buy that from you. The guy reached around behind him and said, here. You can have it. So how about that for a story? And I didn't know 
that Napa ever sold steric tools, but I suppose they would be able to get just about anything you want from their uh, distributors and their, their sources. But uh, thank you ever so much, Ted, for thinking about me and sending this my way. Okay, that concludes this issue of This and That. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. And stand by for a little extra credit if you can take it. All right, we're into extra credit. Let's do a little repair job. I think you all know what a live center is, and there's a lot of different versions of live centers, and these are cup type of live center. So in other words, it's kind of an internal taper. And this is a brand new South Bend given to me by my friend Hank from Minnesota. Remember that? And this is new old stock, and this bearing is quite well, stiff. I mean, it turns fine, and I'm sure it'll free up, and there is an oiler here. But this isn't the one that I really want to talk about. This is the one I want to talk about. It's a similar product. I don't know what the brand is, but I recently had to use it. And this was given to me by, by my friend David Edwards up in Dakota Territory quite a while ago. And I hadn't used it, as I said. And when I went to use it, it wouldn't turn at all. Finally, I got it freed up, and what I did is I punched a hole in the bearing. That's the actual bearing back there. I've done that on a lot of bearings over the years. Sometimes used a hypodermic type of grease gun and greased it up. In this case, I just put some oil in there, and I did get through the job. But believe me, I don't think you can hear this over the video, but it is absolutely rougher than a cob. So I want to replace that bearing. So I was able to read the bearing number on there, and I went right over to eBay, and for $4.30 or something like that, this came out of Florida. I know that it's a, you know, import piece of junk bearing, but, it, you know, it's going to work. And there it is, still sealed, and it's sealed on both sides. Not, in other words, you can't oil it. I wanted one that was totally sealed. But even a sealed bearing, at some point, the grease stiffens up or hardens up. All right, let's take the old one out and put the new one in. I've never had one of these apart, but what I'm going to do here is try to drive the bearing out. I'll straddle it on the vise. And I'll put a punch in here and just punch on that center, and it should pop out. Well, it was quite fortuitous that I found this piece of aluminum with a hole that's about the right size, so I can straddle it like that, and this punch fits in there just right. Let's put this Vaughn hammer to use. Now look, there's a little bit of a slug right here. That's what I was hitting against. Boy, that was a good fit, wasn't it? Now I have to drive the taper, that's number two. By the way, that south bend was a number three, so I'll drive that out of there. Here's a brass rod that I will use to drive it. Note the soft aluminum jaws. I've got it started. I did oil it just a little bit. Now I got a press, but it's out in the garage and it's cold out there, so. This is such a small bearing, this shouldn't be a problem at all. Done. Alright, I put some oil on there, and I'm sure some of you are going to say that I should have pressed it into the cone first. Then I could have used 
a screw, a fine thread screw along with a nut and pulled it safely into place, but this should work. Again, it's just such a small bearing. Okay, and it spins freely. Now, some of you are going to say what I just did there by pressing in with the shaft was I was pressing on the inner race, the inner, whatever you call the inner part there, and putting undue stress on the cage and the walls, and that may be true, but the job is done, and it spins free and easily, and I, of course I wouldn't have wanted to damage a, a $4 bearing. All right, that's the end of extra credit. See you next time.